just stops by itself. So it's not recorded. Okay, so chapter number 24 is on structure and organization of the flowering plants. And flowering plants are all angiosperms. So we'll, this is um, pretty, pretty heavy actually on the structures, the sections, and knowing the different types of cells that are contained uh, inside the cell, in different parts of the cell, what are the differences between uh, monopods and eudipods in terms of their structure of vascular tissues in different parts of the plant. So um, it's a little bit more difficult than what we have covered so far, but probably nothing is more difficult than the classification itself. But there's a lot of memorization. Um, we'll come back to this slide later. So the, you know, the plants are organisms. They are living organisms. Uh, and they are made of cells, and cells make different tissues, you know, different groups of cells make tissues, and tissues make organs. That's the kind of uh, organization that is present in living systems. So things start with very basic things. They are made of atoms and molecules, and molecules make um, biomolecules that we talked about. Then cells are produced from those biomolecules. Cells make tissues, and tissues make organs. Tissues are what we'll be talking here pretty much actually in this chapter. Different types of tissues like uh, you know leaf tissue or, or vascular tissue and ground tissue and these type of uh, things. Plants grow from, uh, even though they don't have stem cells, but they do have a structure which is very similar to stem cells. And those are uh, these very first cells that arise from the embryos. Those are called meristem cells. Nice stem cells are just like stem cells in case of animals. Um, so these are also undifferentiated cells, meaning they are not specialized cells. But these cells produce specialized cells from them. So if you remember, in case of uh, stem cells, stem cells not only make other types of cells, but they also kind of renew themselves. They produce other types of cells. Uh, like uh, in case of humans, you know, they will make blood cells, or they will make, um, um, you know, muscles, muscle cells. But they also renew themselves. They keep on producing more of themselves. In our, for example, in our skin, uh, skins, skin cells are made with stem cells, and um, when the skin um, sheds. Basically, it is replaced by both cells which are present deep inside our skin. So in case of plants, the same role is done with the help of meristem. The first cell that arises from the embryo uh, are meristem cells or meristematic cells. So meristematic tissue allows different parts of the plant to be formed throughout their life. They continue to grow in a certain direction. You have seen some plants growing from the tip, from, from the top. So they continue to grow on the top of the, of the branches, and then they continue to grow deep inside the soil as well. And, and that's their root system and their shoot system. So shoots grow away from the gravity, and roots actually grow in favor of gravity, towards gravity. And that is done with the help of those uh, meristems, uh, which are the cells like that. Apical meristems are present at the apex, at the tips. So the apical meristem means you know, what is present at the tip of the growth. So the, you know, when the shoots are produced, it is done with the help of the apex or the tip part of the shoots. And same thing is done actually inside the ground as well, where the roots continue to grow, continue to expand, uh, and make new roots. So this apical meristem produces three types of specialized tissues. So basically the plant is made of three types of tissues which are called epidermal tissues, ground tissue, and vascular tissue. Epidermal tissue is just like the epi, uh, epithelium of the humans and animals, you know, the surface cells, the cells that come in contact 
with outside or inside the, uh, inside the body. So in case of plants, those cells are epidermal cells, which are present on the dermis. So this is, this is, uh, this is the dermis of uh, skin. So these are the cells which are present on the surface. Ground tissues are the ones which make the bulk of the tissue, which make the bulk of the plant. They are present in roots, shoots, and everywhere inside the plant. Th these are the ground cells which make the bulk. So they increase the, the, the size, they increase the storage capacity of the plants as well. And vascular tissues, what do you understand from the vascular system? What is vascular system? Transportation. Transportation for the transport of things. In case of uh, animals, the transport system there is, what type of transport systems are present in animals? Blood vessels. And also the blood is one. There is another one too. Or lymphatic system. That's right. Lymphatic system is the second one. There are two liquid systems in uh, animals, blood and lymph uh, are the two. So in case of plants, the same work is done with the help of vascular tissue. So the vascular tissue is involved in transporting things. Uh, and there are two different types of things that are, uh, that are carried inside the plants. You know, liquid as well as the, the different chemicals. So. Um, this is what happens in case of plants. Those the meristem cells, which are cells just like uh, the stem cells. So meristematic cells, they divide to produce their own kind, to kind of refresh themselves, to make more of these, their own kind. So then when they are divided, they can actually continue to exist as those stem cells. So meristematic cells are maintained by themselves, by their self-replication. And when they divide, they also make more differentiated types of cells as well. You know, those uh, epithelial, epidermal cells, or ground cells, or other types of cells in, uh, inside the plants are produced from those cells. So those differentiated cells are permanent cells, or they are terminal cells. They are made to perform a function, they continue to perform that function, and then they are replaced. They, they die, or uh, otherwise they don't have the ability to be divided by themselves. What, what is produced, what produces more cells are these meristematic cells. And same thing is true in case of animals as well. Animal cells um, are produced by, by uh, stem cells. Like, you know, most of the cells in our body are not reproducible. So the cells that actually make more cells are stem cells that are present deep inside. You know, we, our skin is made of stem cells when skin uh, the top layer dies, another layer is produced deep inside, which is uh, in between, so there are some stem cells there. In case of plants as well, the same is true. That. So this was the slide in the beginning. So there are three main types of cells or tissues that are produced in the plants from the apical meristem. Those are these epidermal tissues, ground tissues, and vascular tissue are the three main kinds of tissues that make the structure of the plant. Epidermal tissue is the one that makes the outer protective covering of the plant, which is present on the outside. Um, then ground is the one that fills the interior of the plant, that is the, the base, that is the, um, that is the bulk of the plant. That's most of the cells of the plant are uh, ground tissue. And vascular tissue is the transport system of the plant that carries nutrients as well as the liquids inside the plant. So things that absorb in a certain direction from, from the ground up, and then things that are produced in the aerial part of the plant, which are different photosynthates, those are carried back toward the lower part or distributed within the plant. That is done with the help of the vascular tissue. Vascular tissues are much, much complicated types of tissues, and there are several different ones. The first tissue, the epidermal tissue, um, which makes the protective covering of the plant. So the epidermal or epidermis, which is the, uh, the layer of cells that are present on the surface. These are the, the protective coverings. That's why they're present on the outside. These cells contain very tightly packed cells. They are not any, there are no any gaps in between those cells. They are so tightly packed. And in some cases, those cells are modified with other things. So if you have ever you know, worked with plants, or if you have ever touched any plant, or leaves especially, you will see that there is usually a covering 
on the surface of the leaves. Those are different types of waxes that are produced to protect those cells. So what is protecting actually those epidermal cells are other modifications, other chemicals that are secreted by the plants, by these cells, these, these epidermal cells, to protect themselves. Uh, so in the form of some waxy cuticle. So what, what is cuticle in our skin? Do we have any cuticle? Our nails. Over, over actually this part of the nails, right? That protects our nails. So the nails are um, made of uh, some protein and some, some chemicals. What really protects them is this part of the cuticle. So plants are also protected with the help of a layer of cells which are epidermal cells and those that part can be modified. So the part that can be modified could be modified with some chemicals like the wax or they can be modified by other types of modifications of the cells themselves. For example, in case of roots which are made of <coughs> which are made of epidermal tissue also, since they are the outside of the, of the roots also. So they also have these root hairs. Those are root hairs are very tiny, uh, in some cases, uh, uh, you know, tiny and not really visible. They are that small type of root uh, structures. In some cases, they are fairly visible type of root hairs also. So those grow from this layer, which is the epidermal layer of the plant. And root hairs is a modification to increase the surface area so the plants can absorb more through the root system. Um, and then in other cases, plants also have leaves or stems or, or other parts of the plant also have these trichomes. Trichomes are hair-like structure which are fairly sharp. So this is a mechanism to protect uh, plants from getting eaten uh, by other animals. So, and in some cases actually they are, they, they contain other chemicals in them which are not very pleasant thing to, to eat. So plants uh, are protected that way. Animals don't like those, uh, those parts of the plants that have those thorny things and sharp things on them or which don't taste very well. So, you know, same is true with us as well. The lower part of the, of the leaves. Yes. So you're saying the animals that do eat them? Do they have like some type of special teething or something? That they they, they have some modifications, you know. For example, but most of the animals don't like those things that have thorns. For example, those long um, thorns which are found in Africa, uh, you know, giraffes, for example, they don't mind those things because um, they have some some modification of their teeth which does not hurt them. Uh, and then they're very tall, so they can grab those things without really getting hurt. In case of deer, for example, they would not like anything that has any leaves that have anything sharp on them. And they usually graze on some very fresh leaves also. So they destroy crops like that because they pick up the, the fresh growth. And when the fresh growth is in the form of uh, apical meristem, so if you remove the meristem, that basically just uh, uh, terminates the growth in that direction. So you will start, if you actually take a branch, if you have a seedling um, which is starting to grow, has small leaves and has some root system here, if you actually just break the top part of this meristem, then it really directs the growth on the sides. Or there's sometimes there's no growth left at all in those plants where the meristem is not there. So, you know, um, those, those animals love to eat something which is very succulent, very, very soft, without any types of trichomes or taste very well as well. They are very picky in that regard. Uh, in the older plants, uh, the epidermis of the stem is replaced by a periderm, which we will talk about. So periderm is usually the bark, which is a very strong part of the trunk. So, uh, and as it grows older, this periderm or, or uh, the bark of the plant becomes fairly strong. Uh, but, you know, if you have seen, if you have ever seen actually a core plant, you will see it, it's very obvious. Even actually all those trees that we see around us has this, uh, uh, this part which is peri uh, periderm, uh, the outermost layer of the stem which becomes very rough and uh, very hard material. So, and that is also there to protect the plants from getting eaten because this is the part of the plant which contains some of the vascular system also. So deep inside, inside the bark, is a very fresh uh, cells 
that are live cells and that are uh, vascular cells. So when the plants try to eat those plants, you know, it's very difficult to actually bite through the bark or the cork of the plant. Um, and if they are able to do that, they actually destroy the vascular system. If the vascular system is destroyed, then the, the plant dies. So um, again, you know, if you have a small plant, and usually when the small plants are, are, are grown, what people do is usually they actually protect the trunk, the lower trunk of the plant. So bunnies actually they have the habit of actually chewing the part which is the succulent part of the plant. You know, they keep on eating the bark of the plant. So if they remove a circle around the bark, that kills the plant. Um, so this, this cork or this bark protects that part of the plant as it matures. But the fresh one, the newly grown plants don't have that protection because their, their uh, periderm is very fine, so it is easily destroyed by the bunnies and other types of animals they, you know, that like to just eat without really any purpose. <clears throat> So when the plant is grown, these are those modifications. So this modification in this case is the root here. So root here usually germinate from this epidermal layer of the cells. This is, uh, this is increased in surface area for absorption purpose. And the trichomes are present on leaves as well as on branches of the succulent plants. The green plants, uh, host plants, they have these trichomes on them. Uh, trichomes protect these plants to be uh, eaten by other animals. And on the lower part, the modification of the cuticle uh, layer of the epidermal layer are the presence of these stomata. Stomata are the holes, openings at the lower part of the leaf, and those are designed for uh, circulation of the air. Stomata are, are the gates that are used by the plants to intake uh, carbon dioxide gas and produce and release oxygen from them. So these are just the channels tiny pores present at the lower part. They are absent on the top part or upper uh, surface of the plants. And that's the periderm, uh, the cork or the bark of the plant. So it is, um, it is the outermost layer, which is usually very thick layer of cells. As the plant matures, it continues to increase. And, and uh, inside this outermost layer are the cells, which are vascular cells, and those are actively dividing cells. Right underneath that is this, this cambium layer, and cambium layer is made of uh, living cells. So if those living cells are destroyed, that actually destroys the vascular system, and that kills the plant. So this core bar or periderm of the, of the plant protects those from getting, um, from getting destroyed. We get some ground tissue, which is the bulk of the plants. Uh, there are three types of cells. Those cells are these parenchymal cells and colenchymal cells uh, and sclerenchymal cells. So these three. Uh, parenchymal cells are the least specialized of these three cells. These are still cells which are part of the ground tissues, but they, uh, parenchymal cells are the most or least specialized types of cells. They are, they are probably the most abundant as well. Um, and they also have the ability to divide and give rise to other specialized type of cells. So they are not completely specialized, so they have the ability to give rise to other cells. Um, so in a way, they have some role to play in making the bulk of the plant by producing more cells. Uh, they contain chloroplasts and perform photosynthesis. They are, since they are the bulk of the cells, and photosynthesis, which is done in the, in the leaves of the plant, is one important function that is done by the plants. So these type of cells are also responsible for doing photosynthesis in them. Um, Colenchymal cells are the ones that have very thick walls around them. They are tougher, thicker cells. Uh, they make bundles of cells, and this is just usually the second layer after the outermost layer of the cells. Um, they provide support to the plants, um, and since they are thicker cells, so um, it is, it is, they are very obvious in the celery stalks, you know, the leaves, the branches of the celery, 
uh, is crispy and, and tough because of these cells that are present in them. And these are called um, colon Kimmel cells. So would the first one be found in more like stubborn? Well, those are actually everywhere. Both of those are found in our plants. But these are those cells that are abundant in some parts of the plant. But there are also colon chemo cells in strawberry as well. Uh, well. We'll see some of these structures, but they are all dispersed throughout different parts of the plants. They are not present only in one type or the other types of plants. They're, these are the three types of uh, tissue that are present in all plants. Sclerenchymal cells uh, are even actually harder and thicker cells. Uh, they make very thick walls. Um, they are even thicker than the colon cumin cells. Uh, they, are, they, are, they become thicker with the presence of uh, these compounds called lignans. Uh, so lignans make them really tough. And most of those cells actually die. They, they have a structure that is maintained even after the cells die because they are so thick that their remnants continue to perform the function when they are alive, that they, they perform the function. Uh, and they continue to do the same function after those cells die. Uh, but they do provide the support which is needed. And there are kind of a couple of examples given at the bottom. These are different types of uh, fibers and square reeds. Uh, there are fibers which are long cylindrical bundles, like what is seen in case of hemp, which is used to make rope. Um, the natural hemp, and then square reeds are smaller but tougher and stronger structures, structures that, are, that are seen actually in the seed pores and shells of the nuts. Those are the kind of stronger material that make the structure or the bulk of the structure of those tissues. These are the examples. So parenchymal cells are generally uh, uh, kind of they have uh, softer uh, cell walls and as we go from here to square reeds you can see the cell walls become thicker and thicker so they have they have uh, primary cell walls and secondary cell walls but they are not very strong they are not very thick here they are much thicker here and even even more thick on this slide here which is which represents the sclerenchymal cells or colon chemal cells in the middle and these are the ones. And most of these cells are dead cells. They are already gone, they are dead, but their structure is maintained. Um, so whatever remains in place of those cells continue to perform the function that is done by those cells when they are alive. The third type of tissue is vascular tissue. Vascular tissue, which is the transport system of the cells, there are two types of vascular tissue. Those are called xylem and phloem, are the two types. Xylem is, uh, xylem's function is to carry the fluid and nutrients. That is responsible for carrying the fluid and minerals from the root system. And the other one, uh, phloem, is more for transport of uh, different chemicals, carbohydrates, and nutrients that are produced by the plant. So it is for distribution of those uh, products that are made within the plant. What's the, what's the second one you said? Phloem. So, 